Hello and welcome everyone to this virtual workshop. My name is William Russell. I'm one of the talent development facilitators here at Workforce Solutions Rural Capital Area. And I would like to welcome you all to today's virtual workshop on creating cover letters. The objectives of this workshop will be to determine how to write and customize a cover letter that reinforces your qualifications. We're going to learn how to format cover letters, how to get those cover letters to pass the applicant tracking system that many top companies now use, understand how to showcase your abilities in that cover letter, and we'll wrap it up by learning how to use workintexas.com as a tool for building really amazing cover letters. A cover letter is a quick way for you to summarize who you are, what position you're applying for, and what skills and knowledge that you have that qualifies you as a great potential candidate. We want to use this cover letter to specifically target both the job that we're applying for and the employer. We don't need to include every skill that you possess in your cover letter. It's a great opportunity for you to introduce information that isn't on your resume. So when writing your cover letter, you should follow the same rules as formatting a professional letter. I would suggest that you use a sans serif font that is scanner friendly. Arial and Verdana are probably the most popular, but Century Gothic and Gill sans Medium type are both also available in most word processing software. We want to keep that font size between 10 and a half and 12 point. We want to set our margins to one inch on all sides. Now this cover letter shouldn't be more than three or four paragraphs. And as with anything you send out in a professional setting, you should check for grammar and spelling mistakes before it's sent out. Now, all of these tips will help to keep your cover letter both legible and looking professional. So in this age of digital recruiting, many people ask if it's really necessary to write something to accompany your resume or job application. Is writing cover letter really an important thing to do? The short answer is yes. We don't want to treat this as an afterthought to submitting the resume. This is an introduction to a prospective employer. And it's also a great opportunity to make a fantastic first impression and showcase why you would be a good hire. The anatomy of the cover letter itself should start with an attention-grabbing introduction. That should express your enthusiasm about the position in the company. Now, at this stage, if you have been referred to this opening by someone, this is the appropriate place to mention their name. In the body of the cover letter, the meat of it, is going to be a sales pitch where you highlight your top skills, accomplishments, and attributes, and then explain why your qualifications relates to this particular role within the company. As with any piece of written information, at the end, we want to tie it all up by restating in brief how you can add value. We want to make sure that you thank the hiring manager for their consideration. And I would suggest initiating the next step by saying that you would like to follow up with either a phone call or an interview. Now, a couple of quick do's and don'ts. First thing that you don't want to do is rehash your resume. Use fewer words to say more. As I've already mentioned, this should be tailored to a specific job and company. Highlight your past accomplishments. I would suggest if you know the name of the hiring manager that you use their name and address them specifically. The 
So some steps to help you create your perfect cover letter. First one is make it easy to read. Again, we've talked about fonts being between 10 and a half and 12 points, generally without serifs. You want to make sure that that style and size also match what you have on your resume. Now, a cover letter, unlike a modern resume, should still be kept to a single page. I don't think anyone, certainly not a hiring manager, who is looking at multiple applicants doesn't want to read uh, a novel or a multi-page multi letter. I think that anything more than a page will come off as either rambling, best case scenario, or being a braggart in the worst case. Should be about 250 to 450 words, that is, three or four paragraphs to fit that link that is most preferred by hiring managers. You want to make your application stand out with a good header. Employers look at a lot of cover letters for every opening that they post. And if your application is too generic, it can certainly get lost in the haystack of applications. You can help yourself stand out by putting your name in like a size 30 font on your cover letter. The larger the size of your cover letter header, the more it will tend to differentiate your application from other candidates. As I said before, if you know the name of the hiring manager, don't write to whom it may concern or dear sir or madam. Both of those are a bit outdated and out of fashion. Instead, try to find the hiring manager's name if you don't already know it and address that lover, excuse me, address that letter specifically to them. If their name isn't in the job posting, you can look at the company website or check LinkedIn. And you can even call or email the company's HR department to ask for the correct name. It's also a good idea to use a standard professional sign off to your letter. Res sincerely, respectfully, or thank you for your time. Now, every company faces distinct challenges. And for each cover letter that you send out, you should be writing to address those challenges and how you can help overcome them, tailoring it for that specific company. And don't just make a claim that you can perform the job. Explain how your ability to do the job fits in with the company's long-term goals. If you customize your cover letter in this way, it's far more compelling, and it betrays you as a thoughtful and engaging candidate. We also want to quickly establish ourselves as, as a qualified applicant. Many hiring managers don't want to or won't read beyond the first couple of sentences unless it becomes clear to them that reading the letter is, is worth their time. So you want to prove that you're qualified for the job from the very beginning by highlighting your relevant experience and your greatest professional strengths and skills. And then explain how those make you the right fit for this position. So you may ask yourself if there are various formats for cover letters. The answer is absolutely. One of those is a general format. It's one that focuses broadly on your experience, and it's one that can be easily modified for any job that you apply for. I would suggest that you create a generic cover letter and then customize that for each particular position and each company that you're sending them to. There's also a professional cover letter. That's really for mid-level managers and executives and they are hoping to write a cover letter that highlights their professionalism and their past professional experience contrast to that may be that you are an entry-level applicant perhaps you've recently graduated or you would like to switch careers to an industry that you don't have experience in an entry-level letter can quickly establish your enthusiasm and highlight relevant skills so that you can demonstrate that you are qualified for the role that you're applying to. 
Jobs, also a career change letter. Very similar to the entry level, except these are for people who are switching industries or roles that are different than something that they've done in the past. Perhaps the most effective is a pain point cover letter. Now, a pain point cover letter is one that plugs your biggest career success and puts it in the hole of that company's greatest need. They typically follow a three-paragraph format. That is a hook, big achievement, and then a call to action. Now, the best pain point letters actually use some insider information or knowledge about the company. And in this day and age, there are tons of free resources available on the internet to help you create a fantastic cover letter. These include My, my Perfect Cover Letter and Resume.io. Here we have a screenshot example of a cover, cover letter, excuse me, <clears throat> that was created on resume.io. I'm stressing the importance of that cover letter's introduction on how do we write one in a way that will grab the hiring manager's attention and keep them reading. So you want to avoid generic introductions to whom it may concern or dear sir or madam. Those may come, come across as lazy greetings. Again, find out the hiring manager's name and address your letter specifically to them. If it's not in the, in the job posting, check the website or LinkedIn. And if necessary, call that HR department and ask them for the person's name. And we want to be confident, but not arrogant. One of the biggest mistakes you can make when starting a cover letter is coming off as apologetic or coming off as arrogant. Never apologize for anything, whether it's a lack of experience or a work grab that may be difficult to explain. Never brag or make unprovable claims about your skills and ability. And mention your connection to the company. If you know someone who works for the company and they recommended that you apply, your cover letter introduction is the place to mention that, as I said before. It's one of the quickest ways to build rapport with the hiring manager and get them to take special notice of your application. Seeing that a current employee considers you to be a capable and good fit immediately makes employers more willing to give you that chance. So what should the body of our cover letter look like? Again, we don't want to rehash or repeat our resume. That's where we lay out our work history and skills and accomplishment in organized bullet points. Your cover letter should expand on your resume, explaining how your experience is relevant to the company you're applying to and why hiring you is a good idea. In other words, if you just repeat what's in your resume on your cover letter, you're just doing half the job. Your cover letter will lack the compelling pitch that it that is necessary to make that fantastic first impression. And your application will likely be overlooked. We also, when we can, would like to quantify our accomplishments. For instance, instead of saying that you increase sales, you could say that you increase sales by 10%. So without quantifying your accomplishments, your cover letter and your resume will make a weak impression. An employee who simply does tasks by rote memorization without ever really accomplishing anything doesn't make for a strong job candidate. There are a number of ways that you can quantify those accomplishments either looking at company goals, management numbers, or other miscellaneous information, giving a number of the number, the amount 
of customers that you've handled in a day, the size of the budgets you've managed, or those key performance indicators that you have achieved. I also want to demonstrate that you're a cultural fit. Companies increasingly prefer to hire people who fit their corporate culture. Job seekers can learn about the values and principles that companies believe in before applying. It's a good idea to ensure that you're a good match for that company's culture and that your cover letter reflects it. We also want to avoid cliches. Words like self-motivated, go-getter, describing yourself as someone who thinks outside the box or adds team synergy. All tend to be overused. And these common cliches can ruin a cover letter, draining them of life and of meaning. So we want to avoid using them and instead describe your work experience in concrete terms and per provide hard evidence of your achievements. We also want to choose strong action verbs to describe your experience. It's a good way to avoid cliches. The best action verbs can convey leadership, talent, and initiative in the way that you performed your duties. So a bad example might be to say that you met with representatives of other companies to improve relationships. A better way to say that would be that, that you cultivated relationships with representatives of other companies. Now, cultivated is a better choice than met because it shows that you had an active role in both forming and maintaining those relationships. If you've had to use abbreviations or acronyms, which should be done very sparingly, you should clarify those. Spell out the abbreviations and acronyms on their first use, and that's for two reasons. The first one is it makes that cover letter easier to read. While becoming part of a profession, means learning acronyms or abbreviations in that particular industry's jargon, you should still assume that your reader is unaware of those. Including them in your cover letter does make you seem knowledgeable, but only if they're done sparingly. And the second reason is that your resume and cover letter might first go through an applicant tracking system. There's a piece of software that scans your application for the relevant keywords and phrases to automatically detect whether you're a good fit or not. I would suggest that you let your personality shine through. Employers don't just want to hire a list of qualifications. They want to hire a real person that they can trust and who they enjoy working with. Your cover letter's a place to elaborate on what makes you interested in the position and gives employers a glimpse at what kind of employee you are. While you should always keep your cover letter professional, avoid using unnatural language. I, I would like to express my sincerest interest in this stimulating position. Instead, you should write in a formal but concise tone. Also, I explain why you're personally interested in the job. Is it the company culture? Or is it the position in the work itself? Now, since the, the outbreak of COVID-19 and the global pandemic, more businesses have shifted their workforce online or into hybrid modalities. If you have experience working remotely, a cover letter is a great place to show employers that you're capable of delivering on the results that they need, whether you are in person, a mix of virtual and in person, or fully online. And we've got that great hook. We've got a solid body. We want to make sure that we end on a high note. We don't want to skip steps here because we want to make sure that that letter closes in a way that is both professional and convincing. Don't be shy about making. Um, a demand for an interview. Your cover letter's closing. Provide the hiring manager with your contact information, email, email and phone number, and state that you look forward to an interview 
preferably in person. As I said before, don't finish with a common sign-off. There's no need to get fan fancy, but you do want to end on a professional note. Sincerely, best regards, thank you, respectfully, etc. And to add some professional flair, leave enough space below your sign-off and your typed name to add a handwritten signature. Now you can either print your cover letter, sign it, and then scan it back into your computer, or you could put your signature on a blank piece of paper, scan it, and then make that sig signature into an image. Now, 90% of readers read the postscript before they read the letter. That's because it's short and it's easy to understand and digest. If you can do so in a tactful and professional manner, use this fact to your advantage and include a postscript that will make you stand out even more. And don't just put one in for no reason. Experts recommend only doing this if you have a message that doesn't really fit anywhere else in your cover letter. A good example of this would be, P.S., couldn't help but notice from your Twitter profile that you're a Dolphins fan. I respect your grit and determination in these hard times. It's playful while being professional and will really help your chances of being noticed. Again, if you can put it in there for a justified reason. You also want to make sure in crafting your cover letter that you have researched the company and the position. You can learn a lot from the job description, but there may be other requirements that you might be able to locate. And you could do this through the company's website, through internet research, a LinkedIn profile perhaps on the company, or any people that you may know that you could utilize as a networking resource. So as far as using the job description, we want to make sure that we highlight keywords that the employer might need to see to determine qualifications. We want to make sure that it's the same job title, that those keywords that you're using in the letter match the job description, and that you're including relevant skills from the posting. This will help you get by one of the applicant tracking systems that may be used. There are quite a few of them. That's a software resource that acts as a database and filtering application for job applicants. 90% of top companies, that is Fortune 500 companies, use an applicant tracking system as part of their strategy in recruiting and attracting new talent. When you're applying online and redirected to another website, very likely there's an applicant tracking system being used. The mom and pops, uh, companies with 50 employees or less, are far less likely to use an applicant tracking system, but they may still use one. So some recommendations. Follow whatever instructions the website gives, or in absence of clear directions, save this as a Word document file, .docx. Just like with a resume trying to pass an applicant tracking system, you should use a single column format, spell out any acronyms, and for readability, especially to an ATS, you want to avoid things like lines, graphics, columns, shading, these can really throw a wrench in an ATS's ability to see that you're a good candidate. And again, you want to use exact wording from the job description, but you don't want to overuse it. So in the modern age, many cover letters are now emailed, and there are some basic guidelines you should follow for any cover letter that you are emailing. In the subject line, specify the job that you want. 
keep it. Again, two to three paragraphs. You want to make sure that there are spaces or blanks between those paragraphs. Also use a standard professional closing. Kind regards, sincerely, etc. Workintexas.com does have a fantastic resource that allows for some help in building your cover letter. So from the resume builder page, I want to first choose cover letter. Before I move on, I should highlight that workintexas.com does allow you to store multiple copies. You can insert your own text or use a system template able to insert action words and can easily convert to either a PDF, a Word, a rich text format, or a hypertext format. So the next thing you'll do is click on Create New Letter. And then from here, you begin drafting. At the bottom, there is a blue hyperlink, Insert System Template or Insert Action Words. This can be a very helpful tool when you are writing either a cover letter or a resume. So before you send it off, as with anything that we do that's very important, should make sure that we can finish our checklist. So is it easy to read? That means both graphically and in terms of word choice. Single page. Was it targeted for that company in that role? Did you establish yourself and your qualifications in the first paragraph? Is the tone appropriate for the job that you want? Did you expand on your resume without repeating or rehashing it? Did you have those quantifiable data in your letter to provide context? Maybe you showed how you were a cultural fit. One of the big questions is, did you use those action verbs to describe your experience? If appropriate, did you highlight your ability to work remotely? Does it end with sincere and professional enthusiasm? That is by signing off with best wishes, sincerely, etc. Was it signed by hand? Did you, and preferably two or three other people, proofread your writing? And are you 100% sure that your application, and specifically the cover letter, meets the company's submission requirements? So once you've got all of those requirements checked off, you're ready to send. In the workbook that accompanies this workshop, there are some sample cover letters, both a career change and entry level and a professional template. And that concludes our virtual workshop on creating cover letters. I hope that this information has been helpful and informative. If you have any questions or need any help, please reach out to one of the workforce development professionals at your local Workforce Solutions Rural Capital Area office. Thank you again so much. Have a wonderful day.